was the second kid of a family with three daughters. And the only and maybe the most important thing I remember from those days was I wanted to be different out of these three. <laughs> I need to differentiate myself. I want to put my character, I have to. And I was quite competitive. This one, I'm the shorter one. This is my <laughs> elder sister. I couldn't even compete or fight with my elder sister. She was the softest, sweetest lady. So <laughs> I couldn't satisfy my competition impulse. But I wanted to be different so much. It was like an impulse at home and in the garden. And it turned out to be I became a feminist at the age of eight. How did that happen? In the garden, I wanted to be the part of every single game. If boys are playing, girls can play. If it is football, I'm there. If it is basketball, I'm there. If playing with dolls, I'm also there. I was resisting to every gender inequality. I was resisting to all physical boundaries. And I want all of us to be part of every single game. And it was part of that I am different in a way, not a only princess girl. Guess what? There were some ladies around, neighbors, computer you can say. But they had the guideline of how a girl should be a princess one. So how to play, how to dress, dress, where to play. So even if you don't ask them, they were very open to share their feedbacks with you. <laughs> but tell you what, I had my own guideline. It was my first deliberate choice not to listen to them. So whatever they say, I just ignored them. We had our own rules. And it was similar at school also. I was quite active, uh, 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 contributing to everything, etc. And years and years, I was hardworking. In high school, I was getting prepared for university exams. I was working hard. I was trying to achieve some targets. And one day, my father asked me, OK, what's the plan? What are the choices? And I told him that, OK, this is the first one, second one. And the first sentence he told me that, don't fly that high. Uh, it, what? It was like a shock to me. Either he was underestimating me, or he didn't want me, want me to disappoint if I cannot achieve what I want. But anyway, it is horrible. So if someone from the family tells something like that, it can be quite devastating, demotivating. But I just said, OK, it's his idea. We will see. I will do what I can do. I will do my best. But I didn't that much demotivated, and for a while, I decided to ignore his that comment. And in the end, it turned out that I managed to study in the school that I want. Uh, after the school, after five excellent years, uh, I studied in my career. HP was my second company. OK, it was not like that, but <laughs> not only in all cables, but for a person like me coming from a non-engineering environment, it was a bit complicated, let's face it. And I was a product manager for printers. I was trying to bring a product for the first time, and I was having calls with US all the time at night, and I was struggling, and I was really having a hard time, but I was trying to learn and explain all technical specifications. I was asking questions all around and in the office. We were not that mobile at that time. And one night, when I hang up the phone, I realized that my colleagues around, boys and engineers, laughing at me. They were making fun of me. How you screwed, you couldn't tell a thing about this technical specification, oh, you girls, something like that. So they laughed, and I laughed with them, because sometimes sense of humor is good, making fun of yourself. But tell you what, I cho my choice was not to listen to them. 
I was so focused to my own target, so I just laughed with them, and I said, okay, we will see if I'm going to bring that product or not. So it was the moment. And that is the moment that's from the press event that I'm explaining all the technical details of the product and I'm getting questions. So it is my proud moment that you can see from my face. I manage that kind of look. So the moral of the story is even if we are very open to listen, even if we are very open to get feedbacks, sometimes it's not always good to listen to some of the people. So it is better to listen to your inner voice. So if you believe in yourself, it's the best thing. Because in the working environment during our career, it's not always easy. Because everybody has their own guidelines, how to behave, how to be. But if you are so persistent, if you are insisting, if you are pushy, if you are eager to do everything, it's very easy to be labeled like an aggressive lady, she is a bit pushy. So it is their own terminology. And from the first day, I learned that I don't need to listen to everybody. If it is getting me down, it is demotivate, demotivating me, I don't need to listen. And I learned that I don't need to be lovable all the time. I don't need to be the sweetest girl in the office. I just need to be myself, focused, disciplined, and uh, do whatever it takes to reach the target. So it was my uh, choice to not to listen to some of the comments most of the time. I have one single thing to mention that I face in the business environment is about women managers. Women cannot work together. It's not easy to get along with women. So I don't know where it is coming from. It's very old school. And I believe, maybe I am naive, but I believe that there are bad people, good people, bad managers, good managers. So it is nothing to do with gender. So I look at this this way, and uh, it's a prejudice, in my opinion. There can be several examples around, but believe me, today in HP Turkey, I am managing a, a company with 60% of the employees here in Turkey, women. And during my career, I work with many women managers, so I really mean it. It is nothing to do with gender. But all of us have to fight against this belief. I really believe that this belief is from old school. I don't know who wrote all these rules, but now it's our time, especially for women. When we look at the new business environment, we are empathic, we are listening, we are focused, we are disciplined, we are multitasking. Uh, we have so many things that differentiates us and to carry us ahead. So we have to write our own rules, and we have to empower other women, and we have to erase all these things from the old school time. So that's what I believe. Thank you so much.